normal subgroups can serve as building blocks for larger groups precisely because their cosets themselves have the ability to be a group in and of their own right. In this video, we're going to turn our attention to that group, the group of cosets of a given normal subgroup, called the factor group associated with that normal subgroup. What are factor groups? How do we understand their properties? So first, a bit of notation. If I have a normal subgroup N inside of my group G, then we're going to call its factor group the group G slash N. And when we read this in English, we'll say G mod N, using the word mod here as a callback to modulo. So when we think about modular arithmetic, like the arithmetic that happens inside of Z mod 5, it turns out we can realize that arithmetic as a special case of forming a factor group. So that's why we'll read this notation, G mod N. Now remember, how is this supposed to work? The factor group G mod N is supposed to be the group whose elements are the cosets of N inside G when N is a normal subgroup. So coming back to the example that we've been working through in this video, where my group is S4 and my subgroup, my normal subgroup, is N, which consists of the identity and all the 2 plus 2 cycles. That the idea behind G mod N is supposed to be that it's a group whose elements are the rows of this times table here, if you like, right? whose elements are the cosets. So I've color coded them here so that each of the different colors here represents one of the elements in the factor group G mod N. And again, N needs to be a normal subgroup in order for this to work, because that's the only circumstance under which any element can represent, be an avatar for its entire row. So it doesn't matter which element we're picking from my coset, it's going to behave in the same way as every other element in the coset does. So what are the elements of this factor group then? The elements are therefore the cosets. And it doesn't matter if we say left cosets or right cosets, because remember, when n is a normal subgroup, all the left cosets are equal to the corresponding right cosets. So it doesn't matter which one we choose. We've got to choose one just for the sake of notation. So I'm going to choose left cosets. So the elements in the factor group are the left cosets of n inside of g. So in this example, it's these six rows of this table. Those are the elements of the factor group S4 mod n, where n is that first row, normal subgroup. And so the factor group here is a group of six elements. What we don't know, based on what's written down here, is what group of six elements that we might already know about is this factor group isomorphic to. So we want to answer that question next. But for now, we know it's a group that has six elements. What's the operation inside of that group of six elements going to be? Well, again, remembering that this was a normal subgroup, that n was a normal subgroup, I can represent the multiplication of these elements by multiplication by any element in its given coset, any element in its given row. So for example, any element from the purple row, which is the coset of 1, 3, multiplied by any element from the orange row, the coset of 1, 2, 3, is going to give me some element from the blue row, which is the coset of 1, 2. And we know that works because 1, 3 times 1, 2, 3 is equal to 1, 2. Right? The coset of the product is the same as the product of the cosets. That was our original definition and motivation for what makes a subgroup a normal subgroup to begin with. And so that's exactly how we define the operation in the factor group as well. That the element an multiplied by the element bn, in the larger group we think of this as a coset times a coset. In the factor group we think of it as an element times an element. This element 1, 3, n multiplied by that element 1, 2, 3, n is going to give me the element 1, 3 times 1, 2, 3. That's 1, 2 times n. So the elements in my factor group are the cosets, and the operation is multiplication by the representatives of those cosets. An multiplied by Bn gives me Ab multiplied by n. And again, the purpose that that serves is it serves the purpose to blind us to any differences between the elements of n. So in the factor group, everything which belonged to n acts in the same way as one another. It just becomes the element n inside of my factor group. But that means that any differences between these 2 plus 2 cycles in this example and the identity element, those differences are all blurred. We can't see them. And so since we're blind to all of those differences, it means that all of the elements of n are going to act in the factor group like the identity. So the identity element in the factor group is exactly my original normal subgroup n. So all of my normal subgroup n is now getting collapsed down to just an identity element 
inside of the factor group. Another thing that we notice happening in this particular example is that my 24 elements of S4 that I've listed here actually have a nice internal times table structure to them. For example, if I take 1, 4 and 1, 3, 2, 4 and I multiply them together, the result gives me the 4 cycle 1, 3, 2, 4, which is on the same row as 1, 4 and in the same column as 1, 3, 2, 4. That seems to be a pretty useful observation that in our next couple of videos, we're going to turn into a different kind of product structure called an internal direct product. And before we move on, let's also answer the question, to which group of order 6 that we already know is this factor group going to be isomorphic? To make that observation, remember that we need to be blind to differences between elements that are in the same coset of n. So where I have 1, 4 as being the representative of this red row, this red coset, I could just as well have represented it by 2, 3 instead. So I'm going to take the liberty of adjusting that representation. But what I've now find out is that the elements which represent my cosets of n inside of S4 are the identity element 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2. And because in my factor group, those cosets are going to multiply together, combine together, in exactly the same way that these permutations of three symbols are going to multiply together, I find out that this factor group is isomorphic exactly to the group that consists of these six permutations of three elements, identity, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 3, 2. That's the group that we otherwise know as S3. So what we've kind of set up for ourselves here is that we can understand the group S4, so all 24 of these elements in the group S4, we can understand them as somehow being built out of the normal subgroup N which is isomorphic to a Klein 4 group. So it's got three elements of order 2, and then it's got an identity. We can represent it as a product of that group by the factor group, which here is isomorphic to S3. So we're kind of understanding that S4 is built from, in some ways, extending S3 along this group of order 4, which is isomorphic to the Klein 4 group. Let's look at another example where we can see how factor groups operate in a way that Let's go easy on ourselves and use arithmetic that's a little more familiar. Let's think about the group U9, the multiplicative group modulo 9. So the elements in U9 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. These are the relatively prime residues mod 9. And let's look at the normal subgroup that consists of 1 and 8. So that's a normal subgroup. We know it's a subgroup already, but because U9 is abelian, every one of its subgroups is going to be a normal subgroup. So let's see if we can figure out how n is built out of that uh, subgroup. So we'll start by looking at the cosets, cosets of the normal subgroup 1, 8. Well, if I multiply by 2, I get a coset 2, 7. If I multiply that subgroup by 4, I get 4, 5. And therefore, I've accounted for all six elements of U9 through these three cosets, n, 2n, and 4n. And then what I'm going to do is rearrange the Cayley table of U9 in a way that gets my normal subgroup together. So it puts my 1 and 8 here at the head of the line. And then it puts my second coset here next to one another. It puts the elements of my other coset, 4 and 5, next to one another. So all I've done is I've taken the Cayley table and I've just rearranged the rows and rearranged the columns. That's something that we agreed a long time ago. It doesn't change the fundamental algebraic structure of this group. It only changes the way in which we draw its multiplication table, which doesn't matter from an abstract algebra standpoint. But something magical happens now when I write out the products in my Cayley table. So I'm just going to do all this mod 9 multiplication out. And we find out that what's happened when I write down all of my arithmetic is that I can find the original normal subgroup 1, 8. I can find it as this, now what looks like an element on this Cayley table in the first row and in the first column. And also I can find it in these little 2 by 2 blocks. So this 2 by 2 block here has the elements 1 and 8 as a set. Even though we've repeated 1 twice and repeated 8 twice, you'll agree that the set consisting of these four elements is the same as the set consisting of those two elements. It's just 1 and 8. And we see that same set happening again over here and happening again over here as a neat little 2x2 two two block. Likewise, 2, 7, this other coset, we can think of as now an element, the second column and the second row in a new Cayley table, and appearing here as a block here as a block, and there as a block. And then my remaining coset, 4, 5, appears as what looks like an element in the third column and the third row of my new Cayley table. 
and appearing in the middle of my Cayley table as a two by two block right there, there, and there. But when I've rearranged, all I've done is I've rearranged the elements of my group in this order, where I now get the elements of my normal subgroup together and put all the elements in the cosets next to their corresponding elements in the cosets. If I squint at this Cayley table, I see a different Cayley table popping out at me. Not a Cayley table that has six by six elements, but a Cayley table that has three by three elements, a green element, a purple element, and an orange element. And that Cayley table is the Cayley table for the factor group, U9 mod N. And its algebra would just be that of having an element E, which is my identity, A and B, and whose Cayley table looks like this. You can figure out what all of the multiplications are just by looking at the multiplications here in this larger Cayley table. And that's a Cayley table that we know to be isomorphic to the Cayley table for the additive group Z mod 3. So what we've just learned is that U9 mod this normal subgroup N, which consists of 1 and 8, gives me a factor group which is isomorphic to Z mod 3. So this is kind of the picture that I prefer to think about the way in which a factor group really represents a collapsing of algebraic structure. We had more algebraic structure in U9, my 6x6 Cayley table, than we now have in the factor group. But the way in which it collapses is very systematic. Because my cosets, 1, 8, 2, 7, and 4, 5, the green one, the purple one, and the orange one, my cosets are now themselves behaving like elements in a new group. And therefore, when I arrange them just so, they form their own Cayley table, which is built out of sort of blocks of the Cayley table for my larger group.